Good afternoon and welcome to St. Isaac Jokes Church as we celebrate the liturgy for the third Sunday of Easter. Please remember in your prayers Amanda Budkovich, who we remember at this Mass. Please also remember June McGannon, who died and was buried from our church this past week, and Samuel Bills, who died and will be buried from our church this coming week. Now please stand and join in singing the entrance hymn, number 280 in your hymnal, Alleluia, love is alive, number 280 in the hymnal.
Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, and welcome to any guests that we have today. It's the third Sunday of Easter. We have 50 days where the church celebrates the Lord's resurrection, that he is alive, not only to convince us, but also to send us on mission. So my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. 
God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of goodwill. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O oh my just God. You who relieve me when I am in distress, have pity on me and hear my prayer. Lord, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, let your face shine on us. O oh Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. As soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, Bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine on us. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so, so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. 
He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. <coughs> the way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that is I, myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish he took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. How many of you are watching the Masters Golf Tournament? I wish I was named after the founder of the Masters, but I'm not. I don't think so anyway. Scotty Scheffler, who was leading until just earlier today, is a, I believe he's Catholic. He, they talked about his confirmation. And they asked him the other day before the tournament started, they said, what defines you? And he said, what defines me is that I believe in Jesus. And God has given me a platform in order to show his glory. That's somebody who is convinced of the truth of the resurrection and he's being a witness to the world. And that's really what Jesus wants from all of us. And that's what we hear in the, in the gospel reading today. So three things, is it a ghost? What is the resurrection of the body? And are you convinced? So is it a ghost? So what's happening in this gospel now? We're in the gospel of Luke, even though it's year B, which is usually the gospel of Mark. Um, the gospel of Mark has just short uh, resurrection appearances after Jesus's rising from the dead. So we go to Luke today, 
It's right after the, the road to Emmaus, where in the breaking of the bread, the disciples recognize Jesus. He disappears, and they rush back to Jerusalem, and they're telling the apostles about what Jesus had done. And as they're speaking to him, Jesus appears in the room. So one thing we recognize from his resurrection, his you know, risen body, glorified body, is that he can you know, pass through doors, he can be anywhere at any time. And just like we heard last week when we celebrated Divine Mercy, what does Jesus say to them? Peace be with you. He doesn't berate them. He doesn't say, where were you when I needed you? He says, peace be with you. And of course, they're frightened. They think they're, they're seeing a ghost, and we probably would feel the same way. It's easy for us now, 2,000 years later, to say, I knew what was going on. If you were there, you probably would have been terrified, just like the apostles. So Jesus sees that their fear. He's able to read their minds, and he says, come and touch and see. Look at these wounds that I have. This is the body, the same body that was crucified a few days ago. I'm risen. And he says, a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see, that I have. And so there were different thoughts at this time in the first century. The Sadducees believed that after death, that's it. The soul is annihilated, there's no more. They're sad, you see. The Pharisees believed in much like we do today. They believed in the resurrection from the dead, and they believed at the end of time, our body and soul would be reunited. And there were others who believed in the reincarnation. So when I die, my soul will go into the body of someone else. And of course, we hear that in King Herod when he's hearing about Jesus, and he says, it must be John the Baptist come back now in another in another form. So what Jesus is trying to do is to say the Sadducees are wrong, those who believe in reincarnation are wrong. The Pharisees were pretty much on target. But what the Pharisees believed was that the body and soul would be united at the end of time, and Jesus is showing them just three days after his crucifixion, his body and soul are reunited right in front of them. And then he says something really important. He says, give me something to eat. Because they thought it was a ghost, a ghost doesn't have a body, a ghost cannot eat, the ghost does not have a stomach, and so right in front of them, Jesus eats this fish. And he's trying to show them in many different ways that he's not a ghost, but he's risen. The second point is, what is the resurrection of the body? I'm going to go to the catechism here because I think this is really important. Every time we recite the creed, we say, I believe in the resurrection of the body, but what do we mean by that? I think many, many Catholics can be confused on this point. So the first thing it says is what, is, what is rising? It says, in death, the separation of the soul and the body, the human body decays and the soul goes to meet God. So we know that at death, the body, whether it's cremated or put into the ground, the whole body, the body decays, the soul uh, goes to meet God while awaiting its reunion with its glorified body. It says, God in his almighty power will definitively grant incorruptible life to our bodies by reuniting them with our souls. So separation of soul and body at death, soul goes to meet God if that's our destination, and then we're going to talk about when they'll come back together. The Catechism says, who will rise? It says, all the dead will rise, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. So not only do we believe faith is important, is primary, but what we do, you know, faith in action, faith without works is dead. How will we rise? It says, in Christ, all of them will rise with their own bodies, which they now bear, but Christ will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body into a spiritual body. So just like Jesus could just show up in a room, body and soul, that will be our destination at Jesus' second coming. But he said, the Catechism says this exceeds our imagination and understanding. It's hard for us to imagine what our glorified bodies will be like. And he says, this is, the, the catechism says, it's accessible only through faith to trust that this will happen. 
And it also says every time we receive the Eucharist, it already gives us a foretaste of Christ's transfiguration of our bodies. This is a foretaste of heaven every time we come to Mass. And then when will we rise? The Catechism says, definitively at the last day, at the end of the world. Indeed, the resurrection of the dead is closely associated with Christ's second coming. So when Christ comes again, that's when our bodies and souls will be reunited one day. So when we pray the creed today, I want you to think about that. Like, what am I saying? And what do we believe in the resurrection of the body? What we're celebrating these 50 days of Easter is to encourage us and to give us hope that this life is not the end. And so finally, the third question is, are you convinced? Because if you are, it changes everything. If you're not, what we do here at church is just another thing that we check a box, just like going to a ball game. But why do we believe? What Jesus did in this gospel, it says he opened up the scriptures to them. He tied everything from the Old Testament to how he fulfilled them. He says, if you look at the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, all of it points to me. And this is what we call typology. It's connecting the Old Testament with the New Testament. Our faith makes sense. And the more that we understand how all of this connects together, the stronger our faith can become. I've talked to so many people who are doing Be Formed with us, and they say, I've learned things that I never knew as a Catholic, and it is strengthening my faith and my belief in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. And then Jesus, he opens up the message. And this is what's called the kerygma. Those of you who might come to the, the school mass on Fridays, I do this every week with the kids. The preschoolers know what the kerygma is. I'll say, what's the good news? And they said, God loves us and he has a great plan for our lives. What's the bad news? We're sinners and sin separates us from God. What's the best news ever? God sent his son to die for us, to rise to new life so that we can live with him forever. That is what Jesus told his disciples to share. And we continue to do that 2,000 years later. And there have been, he says, and you, he finishes this gospel reading, you are witnesses of these things. The root word for witness here is martyr. Now, some of them were literally killed for their faith. And Peter, you know, we hear in the first reading, the same Peter who denied Christ is now preaching boldly, and he's saying right to some of the Jewish leaders, you killed the author of life. He probably knew that it was going to be the end for him, and he did die just like Jesus, but he was crucified upside down. Are you convinced that this is true? If you are, you can say like Scotty Scheffler. Scotty Scheffler, whether or not he wins the Masters tournament, I'm, I'm sure it's important to him, but he knows that the most important thing is Jesus Christ. He knows that winning money and winning golf tournaments is just a way to give glory to God. So the question for all of us to contemplate this week is, do I believe that this is true? Am I convinced in the resurrection from the dead? If I am, it changes everything. As we recite our creed, pay attention to the words that we pray, especially the resurrection of the body. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God the Father sent his only Son into the world so that we might have life through him. We beg him now for the fullness of life as we pray. For Pope Francis, Bishop Hicks, and all leaders of our church, that the Holy Spirit may give them courage and zeal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That those who were baptized at Easter may grow ever stronger in their faith and be powerful witnesses of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian families, that they will sanctify Christ as Lord in their hearts and in their homes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For increased reverence and awe at the gift of the Eucharist, especially as we prepare for the National Eucharistic Congress, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, especially for Samuel Bills, John Purcell, and for the intention of this Mass, Amanda Butkovich, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful Father, reveal to us your saving power and preserve us always in your grace, for we trust in you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song during the preparation of the gifts is number 298 in the hymnal, Two Were Bound for Emmaus, number 298.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with, with St. Isaac Jogues and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Ronald our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, Father. Peace, Becky. Peace, Isla. Peace, Graham. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Our communion song is number two, excuse me, number 412 in the hymnal, In the Breaking of the Bread, number 412. Second communion song is number 418 in the hymnal, Bread of Angels, number 418. Incarnate, dwell with 
heart. This prayer, prayer for Eucharistic revival on the inside back cover of your missalette. Lord Jesus Christ, you give us your flesh and blood for the life of the world, and you desire that all people come to the supper of the sacrifice of the Lamb. Renew in your church the truth, beauty, and goodness contained in the most blessed Eucharist. Jesus, living in the Eucharist, come and live in me. Jesus, healing in the Eucharist, come and heal me. Jesus, sacrificing yourself in the Eucharist, come and suffer in me. Jesus, rising in the Eucharist, come and rise to new life in me. Jesus, loving in the Eucharist, come and love in me. Lord Jesus Christ, through the paschal mystery of your death and resurrection, made present in every holy mass. Pour out your healing love on your church and on our world. Grant that as we lift you up during this time of Eucharistic revival, your Holy Spirit may draw all people to join us at this banquet of life. You live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Our Lady of Guadalupe, Mother of the Eucharist, pray for us. 
and let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few announcements. So parents of middle school and high school students, we're going to have an information meeting tomorrow after the 1030 Mass. So at 1130 in the Sacred Heart Room, Aaron Buttig and I will be talking about the plans for this next year for our youth. Monday night formation will be at 7 p.m. as always in the Parish Center. We have Behold this Wednesday, candlelight adoration starting at 7.30 when the, when the sun sets. We also need uh, many volunteers for the Seeds of Service next Saturday for pickup, sorting, and delivery of food. You can see more information in the bulletin. And also, you should have received a bag if you live in Hinsdale on your doorstep. If you live outside of Hinsdale, there are extra bags uh, on your way out of church today. And then finally, we have a blood drive next Sunday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Get more information in the bulletin. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And our closing hymn is number 299 in the hymnal, Join in the Dance, number 299 in the hymnal. Say.